My name is Colleen and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to We Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about music. Do you have a favorite type of music? We'll start by reading a story together, then we'll be looking at some art from the museum's collection, and we'll end by making our own art together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to get a closer look, if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, or if you need to gather some art supplies. Are you ready? Let's get started. Today, we're going to be reading a story called This Jazz Man. If you've joined me for We Wednesday before, you may know that when I read a new book, I like to take a look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the story before I read. Let's take a look at this cover together. What do you notice? I see a few different clues on this cover. I see a person here and they're playing an instrument and I see another instrument over here and I see something over here that I think maybe might be a music stand. I also notice there's a microphone coming down from the top of the book there. What do you think the story might be about based on what we can see? Let's find out. This Jazz Man with words by Karen Earhart and pictures by R.G. Roth. Before we start the story, this story is going to be told to the sound and the song of this old man. If you know the song, you're welcome to sing along with me. And I'm also going to invite you to make some music with your body today. So if there's anything that doesn't feel comfortable or doesn't feel right, just feel free to skip it. Let's get started. This jazz man, he plays one. He plays rhythm with his thumb, with a snap, snap, snazzy snap, give the man a hand. This jazz man scats with the band. So each page is going to take us through a different number until we get all the way up to 10. So let's start by clapping for each number. Ready? So we started with number one. Let's clap one time. And we'll do that on each page. So this musician here is doing something called scatting. And scatting is a type of singing that's done in jazz music. And it's where the singer creates wordless sounds as they go along. So I'm gonna read this scat here. Maybe you can try it out too. Be dilly doo ra doo -a. Can you try out a scat? This jazz man, he plays too. Ready? Great job. He makes music with his shoes. With a tap, tap, shuffle, slap, give the man a hand. This jazz man stomps with the band. Shuffle, step, shim, shim, hop, step, slide. Can you make some music with your shoes? Let's try it out together. Ready? This jazz man, he plays three. Ready? One, two, three. He plays congos tween his knees with a bippity bop, poppity pop, give the man a hand. This jazz man pounds with the band. Tick a tock a tick a tock a slap, pop, pop. This jazz man, he plays four. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. He conducts them through the score with a one and a two and a give the man a hand. This jazz man, he leads the band. Bring it on home, now you're cooking. 
So a conductor leads a big band of people so that everybody knows what to do. Can you imagine being a conductor of a big band? How do you think that would feel? This jazz man, he plays five. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. He plays bebop, he plays jive with a beetly beetly bop. Give the man a hand, this jazz man blows with the band. Beep bum bum bebop Have you ever seen this instrument before? This is called a saxophone. And you blow through the mouthpiece here to play the horn, and then you use the keys here to make different kinds of sounds. This jazz man, he plays six. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. He plays solos with his sticks with a bump, bump, but a bump. Give the man a hand. This jazz man beats with the band. Chicky chee, chicky chee, but a but a but a bump. Let's make a beat together. So you can, you can clap, you can use other parts of your body to make noise, you can use an instrument if you have something nearby. So I'm gonna make a beat and then I'm gonna ask you to repeat after me. Ready? Let's try that together. And use anything that you have. Ready? Should we try a different one? Maybe a little longer, a little more complicated? Let's try something else. So I'll do a beat and you repeat after me. Ready? <laughs> Let's try that together. Ready? Awesome. Let's keep going. This jazz man, he plays seven. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He plays notes that rise to heaven with a toot toot tootly doo. Give the man a hand. This jazz man wails with the band. Doodly doodly doo 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 toot. This jazz man, he plays eight. You know what to do. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. He plays keys all 88 with a tink, plink, plinkle, dink. Give the man a hand. This jazz man swings with the band. Ding, 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 plink, plink. Do you recognize this instrument? That's called a piano. This jazz man, he plays nine. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He plucks strings that sound divine with a thump, thump, dump, a lump. Give the man a hand. This jazz man jams with the band. Thim, thump, 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 thump. These jazz men, they play 10. All right, last time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We beg them to play again with an encore. We want more. Give them all a hand. These jazz men make one great band.
So all of the musicians that you saw featured in this book are actually based on real life jazz musicians like Louis Armstrong and Duke Ellington and Charlie Parker. So if you're interested in jazz, this could be a great way to learn about some of these musicians and their work. The end. I invite you to think about your favorite part of the story and talk about that with the people that you're with. We're going to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art. Let's imagine how we might get there. Are you going to march in a big marching band and play music all the way there? Or are you going to dance your way to the museum? Or are you going to ride on a big float in a parade? So you decide. Once you've decided, if you'd like, you can close your eyes and imagine yourself going. Ooh, ooh, that was a really musical journey today. I'm really glad that we made it. In order to get ready to look at our works of art, we're going to be doing an experience I'm calling our Mindfulness Minute. Mindfulness is taking the time to slow down and really pay attention to what you're doing. Since we're talking about music and rhythm today, we're going to be focusing on listening and moving today in order to be mindful. We're going to begin by getting into a comfortable position. I'm going to scoot back a little bit here so that you can see me a little better. And we're going to start by taking a big deep breath in through our nose and out through our mouths. We're going to be making some short movements with our body today. So if there's anything that doesn't feel comfortable or doesn't feel right, feel free to skip it or move in a way that feels comfortable to you. So we're going to start by making some short movements by turning our head from side to side. Okay? Let's start by turning to one side and back to the other side and back. Let's try that one more time. To one side and center, to the other side and center. Let's add another movement to this. So we're going to add raising our arms up over our head into a sun and then we're gonna push them down and wiggle our fingers and make it rain. Okay, let's try that together. So bring your arms up overhead into a sun and gently bring them down and wiggle your fingers to make it rain. Great job. Let's put all of that together, okay? So let's turn from side to center, side, to center, arms up overhead into a sun, and down to make it rain. Great job. Let's add some music to this. So while we put our, all of our mindful movements together, and we're gonna listen to some music while we do it, I'm going to count to eight. So this is something that dancers do when they're dancing is they move to a count of eight, okay? So let's put it all together and we've got our music on. And now let's get started. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great, let's try it again. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Great job! I feel much more ready to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together. If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. Take a close look at this work of art. What do you see? Let's zoom in to get a closer look. What new details can you see now? What do you notice about the lines and colors in this work of art?
This is a painting by an artist named Norman Lewis. It's called Twilight Sounds. Twilight is a light from the sky that appears when the sun is setting late at night or when it is rising early in the morning. When you look at this painting, what do you see that reminds you of Twilight? Norman Lewis was inspired by jazz music when he created his abstract paintings. Abstract works of art focus on lines, shapes, and designs, rather than depicting scenes or objects from real life. Let's listen to some jazz music while we view this painting. Think about what you notice as you listen. Did you notice anything new? Let's see how another artist created art inspired by rhythm and movement. Look carefully at this work of art. What do you notice? This is a sculpture by an artist named Edgar Degas. It's called Little Dancer of 14 Years. A sculpture is a three-dimensional work of art, meaning it has a height, width, and depth. Sculptures can be made of many different types of materials, such as stone, wood, or metal. This particular sculpture is made of bronze, which is a type of metal, with a skirt made out of gauze and the bow on her hair made of satin. One of the cool things about a sculpture is that you can see all sides of it. Let's take a look at all the sides and angles of this sculpture. If it feels comfortable, pose like the dancer. How does it feel to be in this position? This is a sculpture of a ballet dancer named Marie van Gotum. Imagine that she came to life. How would she move? What music do you imagine she could dance to? If you'd like, you can think about performing your own dance to different types of music with the people that you're with. Now that we looked at some art together, let's travel back home so we can make our own art. So get marching with your marching band, or dance to your favorite music, or get on that parade float, and let's head home. For our art making project today, we are going to be making our own maracas, or rattles, with origins in Caribbean and Latin American music. So we've been talking about music today, and you're going to get to make your own instrument to make music with. So you can make just one for yourself, or you can make a bunch of maracas to have a mini concert with the people that you're with. Uh, maracas are traditionally made from hollowed out gourds, like a squash, and then are filled with beans or rice, and then are shaken to be played. So we're going to use a toilet paper roll, and I'll show you a few other ways that you can make a maraca um, to make our instruments today. So for our supplies, we're going to need a few different things. So first thing, if you have toilet paper rolls, I'll show you a couple of different ways that you can make a maraca with a toilet paper roll. I'll also show you a way that you can make it with a paper plate. If you have a paper plate lying around and you don't have a toilet paper roll or if you want to make both. Um, and we'll also need uh, some scissors, a glue stick if you have one. Um, I have some duct tape. So that's one way that we're going to make our maracas today. Um, if you don't have duct tape, then I also have like any kind of fabric or kind of flexible paper and a rubber band. Um, we're also gonna need something to fill our maraca with. So I have dried rice here, but you could use dried beans, even small pasta, any, if you have beads lying around your home, you can use those. Um, we're also going to need some paper to decorate our maraca with. So I have magazine paper and colored paper here and some drawing material. So I have markers, but you can use anything you have around your home, crayons, colored pencils, paint. Um, and then if you're going to do the paper plate version of the maraca today, you'll need a stapler uh, to do that. And you'll obviously need a grown-up's help to use the stapler. So first thing, I'm gonna show you a few different ways that we can make our maracas. So I'll show you how to do the paper plate one first. This one's the easiest way to do it. So any kind of paper plate that you have at your home, doesn't matter what size, color it is, or even shape. And what we're gonna do is we're going to put, I'm gonna put a little bit of our rice 
or beans or whatever you're using on your plate and then we're gonna fold it in half. And then what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna staple all the ends. So I'm gonna staple the ends now. Okay, so I stapled all the ends of my plate here and you see I stapled them really close together so that none of my rice can fall out. And now when I shake it, I've got a nice sound for my instrument. And then you can decorate this with paper that you cut and paste, um, or you can draw on it or paint on it, whatever, however you'd like to design your maraca. So that's one way of making a paper plate maraca. Now, if you'd like to use a toilet paper roll, there's a few different ways that you can do it. So one way is if you don't have duct tape, which is this big heavy duty tape that I'm gonna use in a little bit, you can fill your tube with rice and then you can actually cover it with your coffee filter or whatever kind of flexible paper you're using and then wrap a rubber band around it. And then you would fill it with your beans or your rice and then do the same thing on the other side and then you would be able to shake it. So that's one way if you don't have duct tape at your house but you have rubber bands and some kind of flexible paper. Another way that I'm actually going to do is to use duct tape. So first, before I tape over one side of my toilet paper roll, I'm gonna put some paper on top. So this will help the rice not to stick to the tape, because otherwise you'll shake your maraca and a lot of the rice will get stuck to the tape and then you'll lose some of your sound. So I'm just gonna have kind of a little tape barrier here and then I'm gonna tape over it. So you're definitely gonna need a grown-up's help to help you with duct tape because it's pretty heavy duty, but that's what's great about it for this project because that rice or your beans are not gonna go anywhere. So I'm just gonna fold it over my tube here with my paper underneath and then I'm gonna do one more. And then you just kind of fold your tape over and I'll show you a way that you can kind of hide some of these tape seams. And now we're going to fill it with rice and you see my paper is down there. So you really don't need a lot of rice or beans or beads or whatever it is that you're using. Actually the less that you use the more sound your maraca will make because if you think about it the more beans that you fill your whole maraca with there's a lot less room for them to move around so there's less room for them to clang around in your tube here and then they won't make as much sound. So you just really just need a little bit. So I've got my rice in there now and I'm going to put another piece of paper on top. I'm just going to cut another piece of my you know magazine scrap paper whatever you have lying around because you won't see it. And then I'll put another piece of duct tape here. And sometimes duct tape can be difficult to rip. Okay. So we'll add this piece to this side, and now we'll add another one across. So now I have both of my sides all taped and my rice is not going to go anywhere. So now if you listen, I've got a nice sound in there for my maraca. Now to cover up all this tape, what we can do is we can actually take another toilet paper roll and cut it. and then wrap it around the toilet paper roll that we have. So then you kind of get a little bit of a cover here for your maraca. So I'm gonna use some glue. And now I have a nice kind of 
surface that I can add my designs to. So that's another way that you can use a toilet paper roll to uh, make a maraca with. Now one more way if you don't have duct tape or paper or rubber bands is you can actually just fold the ends of your toilet paper roll like this and then you can staple them. So I'm going to show us how to do that here. And then we can fill it with rice. And then we can do the same thing. And so I did it kind of one way on this end and now I'm going to do it the other way. So we got a nice surface area for the rice to move around. There we go. So we've got all these different ways to make our maracas. I think I might decorate this one because I kind of like the shape of it. So I've got some different materials here to add embellishments with and this is you know the part where you can really get creative with what materials you use. So you can kind of go in your making stuff bin with all your recyclable materials and kind of think about what designs you want to make. Um, and remember the best materials to use for this project are the ones that you already have at home. So there's so many different ways to make musical instruments, specifically to make kind of rattles or maracas. Um, and it doesn't matter because they all make a great sound when they're played. So I'm just going to cut out some paper strips here to glue onto my Maraca here. to be played for my concert. So these are going to be our maracas made of many different types of materials. Thank you for joining me today here at We Wednesday. We hope you had fun. I wanted to show you another example of a maraca that I made. So we made a few different ones together. So this is the one that I made with my toilet paper roll and the one that I did using duct tape and I just added some recycled paper and some colored paper with glue. So that's one way to make a maraca. This is the other one that we made together. This is my kind of pinched and stapled maraca with my toilet paper roll. And lastly, this is the paper plate version that we made together. So I found some butterflies in a magazine page and just added some more drawing. So we've got many different ways to make maracas with lots of different materials. So we would love to see your instruments. You can share them with us on social media and use the hashtags STLArtMuseum and WeWednesday. We hope to see you next time. Keep on creating. Bye.